Brain Lake. As you can see, <laughs> there's just no way. Doesn't fit. That's never gonna go on your hand. It's never gonna go on my hand. There's no way. There's absolutely Doesn't fit my hands. no way. Doesn't so, fit my hands. I couldn't have done it. <laughs> There's no way. But if I did it, I'd probably write a book about it. Mm -hmm. And talk Good about the ways I would have done it. Anyway, uh -huh. OJ's dead. <laughs> yep. Happy Brain Leak, everyone. Welcome back to another glorious episode. Woke up this morning. Got da, da, myself da, 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 a gun. <laughs> Got I started myself. watching that show yesterday. Hell yeah! For the yeah. first time ever. I just finished it, like, a few months ago. I watched the first episode, and then I fell asleep uh, after the first after I started the second episode, because I was really tired, and then I woke up to the fourth episode, and I said, no, I need to go. I need to go back. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to start watching it, because I really like the first episode, The Sopranos. Yeah, very it's good. very good. I like it a lot. There's there's a few shows that anytime anybody hears that HBO fizzle and the... Uh, mm -hmm. it used to, for me, it used to be the Sex and the City theme would play. Because my sister used to watch it when I was younger and then I really got into it as well. And when you're young, it's like, I'll take any excuse to see titties. Oh, yeah. Um, and then for other people, it's Game of Thrones kicks in when you hear that sound. Oh, yeah. Which I have been watching <laughs> again <laughs> right now. What, uh, what season are you going to stop watching? <laughs> I want to, I want to say that I'll stop watching before the end, but I'm honestly, I just like having something on in the background while I paint and stuff yeah. that I'll probably just watch the whole thing. And it's nice to have something on that you already know. So it's like, you don't need to. Yeah, really, really a lot of people it. are like, you got to watch Succession and you got to watch um, White Lotus and things like that. And I'm like, I know I'd like them, but mm -hmm. my brain doesn't want to accept that those are good shows. It just wants to watch what it's already seen. Yeah, exactly. I want to eat here. the food I've already eaten. I want to play the games I've already played. And I want to watch the shows mm -hmm. I've already watched. I want my comfort. Ooh. I almost had some comfort last night. I was going, uh, I was getting in bed and I was like... I want to play a little Bellatro on my Switch, and I want to have a movie on in the background. So mm. I had a movie on in the background, and I was I was paying attention to the movie actually a lot because I was I was watching the movie and then playing a little bit of Bellatro. What well, movie back. were you watching? It is a movie that you're gonna go what? You didn't see that? And I'd never seen it before. The original Predator with Arnold Ooh. in 1987 or whatever it is. <laughs> and I didn't realize that. Predator is the movie where the get to the chopper quote is from. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. I had no idea. Come on, I'm here. Come on, do it. <laughs> kill me. Kill me now. <laughs> yeah, Predator it's great. fucking rules. It was very fun. It's also like the only good Predator movie. Ah, uh, really? Because I was going to watch Alien vs. Predator after that. I mean, good in the sense of like like putting on my, my cinema enthusiast mm -hmm. specs. But I still like Predator 2 because it takes place in L.A. and it's fun to watch. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And there's just some good lines in it and good scenes. And I watched it as a kid, so now some of the like sounds are burned into my brain forever. Mm -hmm. And then all the other ones sucked. And then Prey, the new one, is pretty good. Is Arnold in any of them other than the first? Nope. Oh, damn. Damn, damn, damn. Which, the it's, first uh... one is just so perfect. It's like all the badass it's guys fun. and the time it came out was like all these movies were all about like, yeah, big guys, go in, kill all the oh, foreigners yeah. and yeah, yeah, America. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's like, you know, an alien comes and kills all you fuckers. Uh-huh. I also didn't realize that that's where the the like handshake meme is from mm. with the two arms. R.I.P. Carl with... Weathers as well. Yeah. He's dead now too. Mm -hmm. They got him pushing yep. too many pencils and then he died. Yeah, that's what it says in the movie. Yeah. Because it got you pushing too many pencils. It's a very fun movie, though. Uh, it's always fun to watch those movies from the 80s and be like, oh, man, the VFX is so funny. Like yeah. the, the cloaking device for it's Predators. Like, you guys can't so see him? He, it's pretty yeah. obvious. He's right there. He kind of, yeah, he kind of sticks I love, out I love the bit, shot honestly. where you can't see him and then his eyes just go, bing. Yeah, it's so cool. And then so cool. Arnie fighting him at the end, lights this thing, and then he just goes, Oh! Yeah! <laughs> He's covered in mud. 
or Sick. um me, me and Evelyn every now and then I'll say a joke and like the guy in the movie was like <laughs> what does he say about her pussy? It's like, geez, that's a big pussy. Geez, that's a big pussy. You see, because of the echo. <laughs> sometimes if a so joke funny. doesn't land with each other, I'll just turn and go, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> It's a very fun movie. The uh, the soundtrack it like was making me giggle the whole time because they're just walking through the woods and it's very like epic. Bum, I mean, it's an bum. 80s movie. Yeah. I like that. And it's like, they're not doing anything right now. Why is the music so I, intense? I I don't like Jesse Ventura except for that movie. Um, yeah. Which, it's a weird thing to be like, oh, you were just playing yourself. I don't think you were... I didn't know... I don't think you knew that there was a movie being filmed. I think you just showed up and you were like, we got to... Kill some foreign people. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> um, but him and it just with that music playing in the background, he's like, "I'm a goddamn sexual tyrannosaurus." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I ain't got time to bleed. You retain those quotes so well. I've seen that movie about fifteen times. Yeah, um, it's, and it's one, it of, Ev- so it's one of Evelyn's favorite movies as well. So we're quoting it all the time with each other. So whenever we get like snacks, I'd be like, "Want some candy?" Because there's a part in, I think it's Predator 2, where they're talking about, he like replicates the voice. Mm-hmm. Or Evelyn will be doing something, I'd be like, turn around. <laughs> turn around. <laughs> what's so, a, what's a kid? Turn around. It's, it's a very fun movie. Yeah. Good shit. I would say Alien vs. Predator is also pretty fun. I like that movie. It's not a good movie, but I like it. So I have a question about Predator. Okay. Yeah. And this is a person who doesn't really know a lot about Predator. I love the Alien movies, but this is the first time seeing Predator. So does he wear the helmet because... You've come to the resident al- Predator expert. Ah, yes. A YouTuber. <laughs> <laughs> um, does he wear the helmet because he only sees heat? Is that what's going on? No, the helmet helps him see heat. His regular oh. vision is that like weird red vision that you see at the end of it, but that's... How he sees on his planet and then on Earth, the atmosphere and stuff is all fucked. So he has to put on yeah. a helmet to wear it. Okay. I think they can breathe our atmosphere, but very poorly. Mm-hmm. He is real ugly. Damn. Um, but in the later movies, they have like, they have like crazy vision. It's like the heat vision, night vision. Then they have vision that's like, like X-ray vision, shit like that. Mm-hmm. So it gets really bizarre. But predators steal their tech from other things they've killed. So oh, normally they're cool. just like warriors with claws and like big uh-huh. mandibles. And then their society is based on like technology they've stolen from other things. So is the tech that they're stealing um, laughs? Yeah. Because he steals the laugh and the voice. And, oh. yeah. <laughs> it's like they basically yeah. just like pillage planets and steal their tech mm-hmm. and their culture and their skulls and use them as trophies. They want to be like the best of the best in the galaxy. Mm-hmm. Now I want to watch all the alien movies again. There's a cool part in Predator 2 at the end where you see all the skulls on the wall, and one of them is a xenomorph skull. Oh, and then everyone was like, yeah. aliens and predators are the same universe? And then that was where the whole thing... Mm-hmm. I want to watch all the alien movies again, except I don't want to watch... Uh, what was it? It came out in like 2018 or something. Covenant. Alien Co- Covenant? Yeah. I don't want to watch that one again. we... Evelyn loves the Alien movies as well. Well, so do I. And Alien 1 is awesome. And then Alien... Aliens 1 is like Dead Space 1. And Aliens is mm-hmm. like Dead Space 2. Where it's like, one's a horror movie and one's an action movie. With horror yeah. elements. And they're both amazing. And then Alien 3, Evelyn was like, no, 4 is the bad one. Right? And I was like, Alien 3 is awful. What are you talking about? And then we watched yeah. it and it was like... She was like, yeah, this is really bad. What happened? A- Aliens is my favorite. Of the Alien movies. Yeah. Which is the second Alien movie. I think one is my favorite, but two I remember more fondly. I remember that as yeah. a kid, like the the suit and get away from her, you bitch. And yeah. Bishop getting ripped in half by the queen. Yes. That, so cool. that whole scene now, if I see it, it gives me like shivers up my back because I'm like, oh, I'm a kid again and I'm getting scared. Yeah. Like puts I me remember. In fight or flight. 
my dad was so excited to show me those movies for the first time because I think Aliens is is one of his favorite movies. I don't think it's his favorite movie. I think his favorite movie is The Abyss. Actually, Ooh. that else that um, just came out in 4K HDR. Did it? Also, James Cameron. Ah. He also did. Yeah, apparently Aliens. a nightmare to work on. I want to watch that documentary. Hmm. There's a documentary about The Abyss. Apparently, it was of horrific set to be on all the actors like thought that they were gonna die yeah we because it re-released for the anniversary um mm-hmm. so me and evan watched it like a month ago two months ago how's it, it hold up it's pretty good it's very long and a lot of yeah. stuff is kind of weird in it towards the end but we were thinking that as well i was like man you never see a movie like this because it's all underwater like there's so many fully underwater scenes in the movie that's not mm-hmm. It, like it's all done practically and yeah. yeah it must have been a fucking joke to work on that I haven't, I haven't seen that movie in a really long time but for some reason when I think about that movie and I I'm pretty sure from my memory the alien underwater is just like a weird little orb thing right yeah it's like a jellyfishy see through kind of thing and then they because see like the big giant ship at the end and the civilization and then it like rises up in my brain, it looks like the jellyfish thing that you sent a few days ago on yeah. the fifth in the green on our Discord. But no, he's, I don't he's think more it's purpley. purpley. He's like purpley, Did you glowy, see, bluey. continuing our theme of underwater movies, did you see the movie Underwater? With I did. Kristen Stewart? I liked that movie a lot. I thought it was fun. Yeah, it's kind of boring to watch it a second time because once you know yeah. that the ending is the best part, then the whole yeah. setup is like, yeah, that's kind of sucks. But mm-hmm. it's it's pretty fun. We don't often get many Cthulhu movies. No, and that's about we don't. as close as we get to one. So I'm happy with it. That going to the thing at the end, the, like walking through and seeing all the guys like stuck to the roof and everything, and mm-hmm. seeing the giant guy. That's that's awesome. I want more Eldritch horror movies we all do but they don't sell no they don't horror in general is just a hard sell unless you're doing like like any sort of like unless you are alien any sort of like alien mm-hmm. sci-fi weird thing like that just doesn't ever really do well we even saw it dead space one remake came out apparently only sold a million units and then ea oh, were really? like yeah we're not doing the sequel it, there's hmm. conflicting reports of them saying It was never in development, which is also crap. And Mm -hmm. also that it was started and then the developers were moved off of it to Battlefield. And they're doing an Iron Man game because it sold so poorly. And everyone was like, no, no, no. It was actually just never planned. And I was like, that's worse. (laughs) We're just arguing over how dead it is. It is sad. It is hard for, for horror to be real mainstream. It needs to be like, like ghosts and Ouija boards and like those types of horrors, like a bump in the night haunted house kind of thing. But you can't, as soon as you put like aliens and shit into it. Yeah. Cause in my mind, there's so many horror movies that are like, oh, this movie was huge or like it was a really good horror movie, but it actually like was a bit more niche as far as movies go. Yeah. You know, um, like the. Most popular horror movies of the last decade is what I'm looking at. Mm. Um, the Babadook is on there, which I feel like is kind of niche still. The Babadook. Yeah. I I'd, I'd agree uh, Obviously, with that. Hereditary in... Hereditary, Get Out, Us, It. Those are all, like, huge horror movies that got into the mainstream. Yeah. Um... I am excited to see, just because I've been seeing trailers recently for it, um, I'm excited to see the new Quiet Place movie. Oh, yeah. Quiet Place Day One or whatever. I didn't see Part Two. Was Part Two good? Yeah. I, okay. I you should just, well, if you don't want to watch the whole movie, I'd say watch the whole movie. But to get into mm-hmm. the mood for the new one, you should watch the opening to the second movie. The opening to the second movie is the best part of the whole thing because it shows yeah. like like John Krasinski's back and it's like before it happened and it shows how it happened. And I think that that was so successful and people like that part of the movie so much that that's why they're doing the third one as like D-Day. Mm. Yeah. Um, but it's fucking sick. There's like big uninterrupted shots in it and like the sound design and the monsters and the the way the camera work is all done is fucking awesome. It's so much better than the rest it. of the movie. I don't know why 
the start of it goes so hard. Is the rest of the movie just kind of a letdown? It's not so much a letdown. It's just, it's kind of more of the same. It's still mm-hmm. really good, and I still like that movie. And Killian Murphy is obviously my uh, sweet cork boy. I but love Killian Murphy. It's still, it's like if you've seen the first one, the second one, I would say, doesn't add much more to the like mm-hmm. lore and the world. Yeah. It's just fun to be in that again. But the first one's a much stronger movie. Mm-hmm. I well, if I if I watch it, I'll watch. I'll watch the whole movie. I don't like watching just parts of a movie unless I've already seen it. Mm. I was, and I know that she's listening to it, and I'm calling her out right now, and this is fine. Uh, My mother, (laughs) mom, I don't like that you do this, and I'm calling you out. She was telling me the other day, because she was here a little bit ago, and she was like, I watched, I went out for the day, and she was like, I'm going to sit here and watch a movie. And I was like, okay, great. And so she watched uh, Poor Things. I haven't seen Poor Things. I haven't either. Um, but I've heard some really good things, some, some really bad things. Anyway, I was like, oh, how did you like it? And she was like, it was all right. I skipped through a lot of it, though, because like parts of it were a little bit boring. But like oh. I, I liked it in the end, and I was sitting there, oh. and again, love my mom, but mom, Sometimes you got to call out the people that you love. Don't do that. Don't I, skip through a movie. You can't have, you can't form a You can't say reliable, I liked it in the end when you yeah. skipped bits of it. Yeah, you're not, a, you're not a reliable source of feedback. If I'm asking you for your opinion on something and you skipped through parts of it. I thought you were going to say then, that she like stopped halfway. And I was like, yeah, no. I know a lot of people that do that, but you're skipping. No, no. Even like, you know, if you stop halfway and you don't come back, then it's like, yeah, I kind of saw it. Okay, whatever. I'm already not going to value your opinion. At least you have you like a semblance of act structure then or like uh-huh. arcs or what the characters are like. If you're skipping bits, you can't tell that. Exactly, and that's what I said. And she was like, well, it was just like through the boring parts when they were walking through the thing and just talking. And I was like, that's, that could be really important information that you're skipping through. That's probably the reason Emma Stone won an Oscar is those parts. Oh. So, Mom, I think that you should watch Poor Things again and not skip The through. only thing I've heard about Poor Things is that there's a huge amount of sex and nudity in it, and that was it. Yes. And yes. that I was like... There's like there's not more to it than that. And they were like, oh yeah, obviously. But like that was the thing that mm-hmm. they came away with, the people who were talking to me about it. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah. I guess um that's it. I do want to give it a go. It's a very um polarizing. It's yeah, and it's very uh what's the word that I'm looking for? Oh, it's like intentionally obscure and like weird and like over the top. Mm. Uh, there's a different word that I'm trying to think of, but I can't think uh, of it. Pretentious? No. Stupid. Well, I guess it, it could be seen as pretentious and stupid and shitty. Depends on what lens you're looking through. It's like one of those very artistic movies that's yes, very obtuse. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want to give it a go, though. I really want to, in this next year, watch all of the Oscar noms. I've been wanting to do that for years and years and years, and I never do it. And I always see a few of them. But this next year, I want to try and make an effort to be like, okay, everything that's nominated in every category, I want to see every In every category? Yeah. That's so many movies. I was just going to go to Best Picture and see how many of those I watched. Oppenheimer? Yeah. American Fiction? No. No, I actually don't know what movie that is. Oh, I do. Uh, Anatomy of a Fall? Ah, We were going to watch that so many times and then saw how long it was. And it was like, shit, it's too late in the night to watch it now. Mm -hmm. Uh, Barbie saw. Holdovers didn't see. Killers of the Flower Moon didn't see. Didn't see. Maestro didn't see. Past Lives didn't see. Poor Things. Zone of Interest I did see. How was Zone of Interest? It's it's hard to say it's good because of the subject matter. Mm-hmm. It's very different, and the way it's shot is very cool. Um, but it's just, the whole time I'm like, eh, this is kind of awful. Like a family sharing a wall with a concentration camp is like, like hearing yeah. be, her mother comes over and it's like, oh, here's our garden, and here's I've started planting stuff here. We have like potatoes, and you just hear like, gunshots and people on the other side of the wall like screaming and it's like 
I don't like this. <laughs> I don't know how Maestro got nominated for Best Picture. I didn't see it, but I've only heard horrible things about it from every person that's seen it. I don't... I don't know how much truth there is to it because I don't know many business people in the film industry, but a lot of people are like, oh, it's Oscar bait. Or like movies yeah. like that come out that are just designed to try and get like a best picture, a best actor, and just get nominations, mm -hmm. even if it doesn't win, because at least you get an yeah. exposure. But I don't know. I think that's why I don't watch the Oscar movies, because I'm like, I'll just watch stuff that I'm interested in. Like the reason I do want to watch Past Lives, because I've heard really good things about that. And I like mm -hmm. little sweet movies about love and life. Mm -hmm. And I've heard good things about the holdovers. Those are the only two that I want to watch out of that. The rest of them. Yeah. Oh, and Anatomy of a Fall. I've heard good things. I watched uh, All of Us Strangers the other night. Very good. That was nominated. It wasn't Best Picture, but that was nominated for something I can't remember. Somewhere in there. Paul Mezcal. It's yeah. Paul Mezcal and Andrew Scott. Very good. Very sad. Very emotional. I love an emotional movie. I love are, when... Are they a couple in the movie? Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a great film. I really like it a lot. Uh, good shit. Good, good shit. I still need to go and see, and I want a little bit of opinion from you. Okay. I really... I want to go and see Gorilla X... Or Gorilla. Godzilla X Kong. Gorilla X <laughs> King. <laughs> Uh, I same with that movie. I've heard nothing but <laughs> real bad. Oh. But it's King Kong and Godzilla and there's other monkeys there. I feel like if you're saying it that way, like, oh, but it's Kong and Godzilla, then you should absolutely mm -hmm. see the movie. Because that was the same yeah. with me. I'm like, this movie's going to be shit. The last, like, yeah. Godzilla versus Kong was pretty shit in terms of, like, mm -hmm. story. Yeah. And, oh, my God. I forget his name. He's in the last movie, the black actor who's like the conspiracy theorist. Forget his. Oh, yeah, I can't remember his name. He's either. in Bullet Train. He's Tangerine or Lemon or whichever one he is. <laughs> um, Brian Tyree Henry. Mm. He's Paperboy in Atlanta. Mm. Um, he's so fucking annoying in this movie. And he oh. should not be in it. And I don't know why they brought him back. And there's so many times when it's like, you're bringing him to Hollow Earth? He is a conspiracy podcast. It's like, what are you doing? <laughs> he's the perfect person to go there. And he's he's just in it so he can be like the comic foil. But he's such a shit yeah. comic foil. Which is such mm -hmm. a shame because he's such a great actor. Yeah. Um, but I'd say he's the only part of the movie where I'm legitimately like, eh, stop. I want to punch something. But what about Baby Kong? I heard that everybody That's wants to so strangle fun. that baby. <laughs> that is so fun. He becomes really sweet towards the end, but he's like an enemy in the beginning. And it's so fun <laughs> to watch. I like, and there's a specific thing at the beginning when he fights against Kong and some others that I'm like, I kind of want to say it so you'll go watch it. But it's so yeah. funny what he does that I'm like, you got to see it. I don't want you to get spoiled I, on that tiny little bit. <laughs> I'll go and see it for sure, because I love a Godzilla movie. Yeah. Uh, there's there's so much fun. And at the end of the day, we all know, except for minus one, that the plot is going to be shit. And so you know what you're signing up for. It's like, okay, I'm going to go and see some big old yeah. monsters fight. I think it's gonna be sweet. I'm usually a snob when it comes to movies, and I'll be like mm. picking stuff apart. But Godzilla is like... I don't care. Like, even the 1999, uh, like, is it Roland Emmerich that made, like, the American one that has mm -hmm. Hank Azaria I, and... I haven't seen it. any of the older Godzilla movies. Oh, I haven't I, seen the, I like, the original them. ones. There's so many. There's, like, 50-plus Godzilla movies. Yeah. There's so many of them. Um, But it's fine. I, it's just mm -hmm. big monsters beating the shit out of each other. Good sound design, cool set pieces. Mm -hmm. It's fun. Just watch it. Who cares? Turn off your brain. Yeah. Just watch some big monkeys throw each other around. Yeah. Hell yeah. Super Watch fun. a movie that is 90% CG. Yeah. Hell yeah. It's sick. Hell yeah, baby. It's fun. And it doesn't I make any know. sense when you like pick it apart. Yeah. And there's some stuff that they hid from the trailers and the promotional material that's like 
oh, this shot of them together actually has like another character in it, but they like cut them out for the poster to be like surprise like like spider-man no way home it's alternate yeah. dimension uh king kong it's percy percy jackson peter jackson's king kong comes in <laughs> it's actually the kong mm -hmm. they're going to hollow oh, earth yeah. and they go and there is a part in it where they're going to hollow earth and then they find a thing that goes down and i turned to evelyn and i was like hollower earth <laughs> and then it basically is hollow earth it's hollow earth inside hollow earth and i was God. like <laughs> like me and evelyn just laughed out loud in the cinema <laughs> uh, it's so good it's so anyway, good anyway go watch it stop pissing or piss or get off the pot whatever just watch a movie yeah i think it's important to remind people that you can like movies because they're entertaining being entertaining and being uh on on paper good or whatever Two you're, different things. You're allowed to like whatever you like. Just don't tell the internet mm -hmm. about it. <laughs> yeah. As soon as you tell exactly. the internet about it, they'll pick it apart and tell you why you're wrong and everything's miserable. Mm hmm God, I don't do that. I haven't I haven't been on the internet recently. The only form of internet that I've really been on is uh like looking through people's Instagram stories and that's about mm. it. But it's been so nice being off of Twitter. And that was a crazy thing this morning was when I heard the news that O.J. Simpson died. Uh, somebody texted me about it, and I was like, whoa, I had no idea. And also, yeah. shit, I should get a better um, source for my news than what I had, which was Twitter. Twitter is a very bad uh, place yeah. to get your news. So if anybody just, has any... Uh, I just browse the front page of Reddit like mm. two or three times a day to be like, okay, anything new happening? No. Yeah. That's about it. I usually get like mm -hmm. video game announcements and like stuff like that happens. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's the same. You text me and you're like, oh boy, the news today. And I was like, what happened? What? what like, news? I don't, yeah. I don't go on Twitter. I don't really use Instagram. I guess I use Reddit, but like, that's like before bed or something. Yeah. So it's like, and if you're not, if you don't have a TV watching the news, it's like, how do you get your news? And like, I don't. It's great. Mm -hmm. I don't really want to know what the world is up to most of the time. I don't even yeah. know what I'm up to most of the time. This uh, this morning, I guess. Was it this morning? Yeah, it was announced that O.J. Simpson died of cancer at 76. Oh, he died of cancer? Mm-hmm. Oh. He died of cancer at 76. Uh, former NFL player, former probably murder. Rur. Yeah, I'm you pretty know. sure he was a murderer. It's pretty, you know, the glove didn't fit, but, you know. I love that. I, because I, I, didn't he, wasn't he accused of killing two people? Like his girlfriend and the waiter or something like that? Um, I just realized that I don't actually know a whole lot about the O.J. Simpson case, other than there was a glove, he got acquitted of it, and that's uh, it. Uh... Yes, you are correct. So it was, uh, he was acquitted of murder in 1995, the murder of his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend, Ronald Goldman. It was one of the most notorious criminal trials in American history. Yeah, I remember seeing, like, the results of it and people, like, in Times Square, like, the whole world stopped and mm -hmm. were waiting for it. But it was also, like, it's not just because O.J. Simpson was such a big deal that everybody was watching it was because it was a black man on trial so it was very divisive with mm -hmm. like racism and things like that in america so there's so many clips of people just watching it and like yeah there's like whole rooms of like white people and black people together and the black people are all cheering and the white people are always like oh no because it was like oh it's a win that another black man doesn't go to jail and things like that mm -hmm. so it was such a it was such a divisive case all across the country. And it's only now, like, looking back at it that I'm like, this is wild that so much of the world cared about this thing. Yeah, everybody was watching it on TV all the time because you could just watch the live the live court case. Yeah. Um, which I can't remember the last time there was a court case like that. I guess the Depp Johnny Depp and, and Amber Heard stuff. Which I didn't um, realize is up to the judge to decide if the case is interesting enough that they're allowed to agree to just let it be filmed 
or broadcast if they're like it's I, uh, it's of public interest enough that we're going to broadcast this trial i had never thought about that before actually of like which cases get broadcasted yeah it's like why would that one be broadcast of all things yeah and especially like That's a murder wild. trial as well it's like dude the families mm -hmm. of these people are like part of this yeah um, damn i didn't think about that because uh what other what other famous court cases were were televised casey anthony i think was televised mm. uh famous televised court trials yeah i can't think of any others off the top of my head I think it's because it's all very American. I don't think we really do that here. Yeah, it would. There would just be a lot of time adjusting the wigs and stuff in England. And, you know, <laughs> I don't know. A lot I of people know. wouldn't Nobody understand the accents. And, yeah. Oh, I think he did it. What, what did he say? I think he did it. Probably don't even know any. Um, you know. So the whole is is the whole reason OJ got away with it because of a glove, or is there more to it, and that just became the meme? Uh, I think that that definitely, like, became the meme, and it is kind of funny seeing the footage be like, ah, I don't fit on my hand. <laughs> Turns out he just left um, his hand out in the sun all day, and it got really swollen and fat, and he was like, see, it doesn't fit. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Let me read this little thing. On October 2nd, 1995, the jury finally began deliberating and reached a verdict, verdict in less than four hours. Uh... However, it was delayed. The announcement was delayed until the following uh, until the following day. On October third, Simpson was found not guilty mm -hmm. of the murders. Uh, after the verdict, polls of public opinion continued to break uh, down along racial lines, like you were just saying. Um, but it doesn't say. It's funny how I know more of the outcome than I do about the actual trial. Yeah. Uh, okay. Although Simpson was acquitted in the criminal case, he was also sued by the victim's families for wrongful death, death, and the civil trial began on October 1996. Less than four months later, that jury found him responsible for the deaths of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ronald Goldman and awarded their families $33.5 in damages. Whoa! Wait, so did he go to jail for that? that? Wait, no, it, would have, it was a civil case. I'm so confused. I don't understand I don't courts. I don't understand how our legal system works. It's wild. I don't think it does. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, it, do um, it doesn't. And I didn't realize that I've watched Naked Gun so many times. I didn't realize that he is the guy in that. Like he goes down mm. the wheelchair and like bounces off the steps and he gets shot and he like falls into the cake and falls off the edge of the boat and things like that. I didn't know that was him. That's so weird. It's like he might have killed he, two people. Oh, you got away with it? Be in our movie. So he, uh, he was imprisoned at age sixty-one, uh, and he served nine years in a remote northern Nevada prison. But that was after he was convicted of armed robbery and other felonies. He he committed armed robbery. I guess so. In his sixties. What? <laughs> what? Hold on, I'm so. When did O.J. Simpson, the robbery case? Oh, it was uh, in 2007 at a casino in uh. which Simpson and five men, at least two carrying guns, stole sports memorabilia worth thousands of dollars from two dealers. Simpson said he was trying to recover his own property, but was sentenced up to 33 years in prison. He only served nine. What? This is wild. This guy doesn't sound great. Uh, well, no, yeah, not a not a good not a good um person. Not a good role model. No, it's it's pretty certain. Uh, a lot a lot of people really think that he did do the murders, and there's a lot of evidence suggesting that there's no way that it wasn't him. Well, I I wanted to bring up the book thing, and it's probably a fact that everybody knows now that he he wanted to do a book called If I Did It. Um, he, mm. um, which is him going up, or like <laughs> showing what he would have done if he was to kill his wife. And then the family were like, we don't want that to come out. Like, that's awful. Why would you do that? So then I think they got the rights to the book and then they changed the title. They had, they couldn't change the title to the book. It had to be if I did it, but they made the if really small. So it just says, I did it. 
by OJ Simpson. And I think they got all the money from the book. That's wild. I could be misremembering, but I think that that was something that happened. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Which is uh, such I'll... a... That's like... Why would you write that book unless you did it and now you're happy you got away with murder? Nervely, put the uh, put the cover in. The if is barely there. You can barely, barely see it's it. in the eye. Damn. Yeah, and his bloody footprint. That's crazy. Also, I did see that... Um, if, if you are inclined to go study about this stuff, just be careful because the aftermath pictures of the murders are just freely available on Google Images. And mm. it's it's very bloody and you were mm -hmm. literally just seeing dead bodies. So be careful out there if yeah. you are sensitive to that stuff. But it is like Always a whole bunch of snooping around on the internet. bloody footprints leading down the driveway or the walkway. Mm -hmm. Really creepy. It's like a horror movie. Is crime stuff something that you're interested in? Do you like crime stuff? I I kind of do and I kind of don't. I I find myself getting sucked in because there's so much true crime on Netflix that I kind of roll my eyes at a lot of them. And mm. Evelyn watches some of them in the background sometimes and I'm like, God, this fucking sucks. Like, this is filmed badly. It's terribly shot. It's dragged out. The mm -hmm. case doesn't actually make any sense. And then other ones I get really into, like The Jinx, which is like the best yeah. documentary about that ever mm -hmm. and the staircase is really fun i remember even seeing that and i was like 13 episodes you fucking kidding me and then we yeah. watched the whole thing and i was really into the whole thing um yeah. but most times i think i kind of just feel bad watching them because i'm like ah oh, somebody's mm -hmm. dead and i'm just like i feel like i'm poking and prodding around in it and the families and yeah. things like that um but unsolved things are interesting i think oh yeah like we were talking last time db cooper yeah that's that's crazy. Donald D. Butler Cooper. Cooper. I can't remember uh -huh. what the DB was. Do you remember? Uh, Dan something Cooper. Dan Branson. I can't remember. Um, yeah, like that and... Like Diablo like Pass. The J that, that kind of shit is fun. The JFK assassination. How many shooters were there? Yeah. Bah, 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 bah. Oh, man, when I finally got the internet and I was like 17 years old that I got real big into the 9-11 conspiracies... Mm -hmm. And I was like, I kept going down there. It's only now that I realized like, oh, you were, you could be made to believe whatever the fuck you wanted back then because there just wasn't mm -hmm. anyone like fact checking YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. And nowadays I'm like, God, it was stupid that I ever believed any of that shit. But back then I was like, dude, yeah, this doesn't make any sense. And then I was like, now I'm like, I don't even know if I had any proof of anything. The people were just saying yeah. shit and I believed it. It's wild. I mean, especially back then. Now it's a pretty credible source, Wikipedia. But back yeah. in the in the golden ages of Wikipedia, you could just say whatever you wanted. You yeah, say whatever. <laughs> like the um, um, is it the Phoenix Lights? The Phoenix Lights. Ooh, do I get to introduce you to the Phoenix Lights? What Google are the it. Phoenix Lights. They the are Phoenix. It, lights. It's a UFO or a UAP phenomena. Phoenix lights, sometimes called lights over Phoenix, are a series of widely sighted, unidentified flying objects observed in the skies of southern U.S. states of Arizona and Nevada on March 13, 1997. Look at that picture. Oh, that's it. That's so cool. People were outside, and then those lights that showed up appeared one by one next to each other, slowly. Mm -hmm. And then people were like, this is fucking crazy. And then people started seeing like a triangle move through the air that had lights oh. on it. People were like, this is UFOs. This is crazy. This is all happening. Turns out it was just military practice. They're flares yeah. that were being dropped. Um, or so the U.S. government tells us. Da, da, da. Back, back then, I was really into it, and I was like, what is it? Mm -hmm. There was also a, a thing going around, like a hoax going around about like trumpets playing in random places in the world. So people were mm -hmm. filming like their backyard and they're like, dude, what was that sound? And then you hear like a big, almost like War of the Worlds, like, wah. Yeah, oh. And then people were like, dude, what the fuck is that? And I was like, is, is the world ending? Mm -hmm. And I was like 17, so I was like really gullible. And then it's like, now you listen to it, it's like, that was obviously so fucking fake. Why wouldn't that mm -hmm. be everywhere? <laughs> one of these days we should do an episode where where one of us does some research on some sort of 
thing like a ufo thing or yeah. a cryptid sighting or something we teach the other about it because i do love that stuff so much oh it's so interesting the yeah. curious mind it's one of those things where i'm like man i wish ufos were real i wish we actually got like a thing of like an alien like but i'm way too like logical brained where stuff happens mm -hmm. and i'm like well that's fake obviously <laughs> But what's behind the gates of Area 51? What are they holding in there? Why don't they want us in there? It's probably huh? so boring in there if you went in. The people who work there are like, man, if only you could just tell people that it's like we have a new panel really type for a jet that we're like. Yeah. We have like a new engine thruster that we're using. <laughs> yeah. And it's just it's just military stuff. So we can't we can't talk about it. Yeah. I don't know. But man, oh. is it interesting. I landed there in Flight so Simulator. That was cool. Did you? What did you see? Uh, buildings. Hangars. Mm. Mm. There's a mm. runway there. Why did they have a runway if they're not uh, launching the... UFOs off of it? Yeah. Interesting. Hmm. What about Very that, American government? Hmm. I also think it's interesting that whenever hmm. alien stuff happens, it's like Area 51. It's in America. Of course the aliens would go there. Like, why would they? Yeah. Why don't they ever go every, anywhere else? I've seen some mm. UFO footage from, like, Chinese news outlets before. Mm -hmm. um, but it's never like, like, no one ever sees UFOs in Ireland or England or the Netherlands. Mm. <laughs> America's just trying to convince people this is why we need to keep paying for health care. It's because something's in your water that makes you all stupid. Mm. Mm -hmm. And like all you Americans out there, I'm sorry, but you're all like shaking, like nodding your heads now being like, mm, he's right. Yep. Yeah. 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 You know, land of the free, kind of not really at all. You know, it's, <laughs> land of it's the so free great. in quotation marks. Home of the mm -hmm. brave. If you could live in any other country, where would you want to live? Ooh. I, somewhere in Europe. Mm. I think Japan would be kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Um, Iceland would be cool. Iceland would be pretty cool places like that places that have like it's like well iceland not so much but japan is like massive cities but also really cool nature and historical sites yeah i think japan's one of the cooler places i'd also love to live in new york i think new york is like an incredible city anytime i go there i feel so inspired walking around it's so cool. yeah i've only been to new york once really oh. uh, and i want to go back i would love to live there for a short period of time like i would love Same. to go there for like a month or two or something that yeah, if we didn't have to, like, do stuff with BB or give him insulin or if travel didn't kill him, <laughs> yeah. then we would absolutely go to New York for a few months, I think. It's such a cool place. Yeah. I think that I would I would want to see what the Netherlands is like, honestly. I've mm. heard so many cool things about the Netherlands. It seems so nice and peaceful there. Yeah, it has really good infrastructure. The people are decent. Obviously, there's mm -hmm. some shitheads out there everywhere you go. But the food is great. It, it just mm -hmm. feels like a country that appreciates its people. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's not, like, trying to get more out of them all the time or trying to, like, fuck them over constantly. I'm sure I could be wrong about yeah. that, but anytime I've been there, it's like, oh, man, the rail system rules, the buses rule, everything's, like, <sighs> like it's a small enough country. The weather's nice during summer. You can cycle everywhere. Has Evelyn ever told you about any cool cryptids from the netherlands any conspiracy theories oh, from the netherlands man. that would be so cool oh. she'll tell me about the shunga yunga the oh yeah de the demon that comes out at night oh <laughs> i want to learn about he, these things and he's real sleepy he's like <laughs> <laughs> he's just a sleepy guy he goes out and he goes oh, shunga yunga hey hey poo poo <laughs> now now oh hey hey poo poo now what does that mean again I, I don't know if it means anything. It's just like, I'm tired. Oh. Like, ah, oh, God almighty. Like, what a... Ah. What would you guys what say is... at the end of the day? Oh, like, man. Like, if you're so tired you and say? you stretch and you yawn and there's like one phrase that you say all the time. Oh, uh, if you're real... If you're... My dogs are barking. <laughs> good, yeah. Like a real dad quote. Like, oh, my dogs are barking. Or like, oh, man. Ready to hit the hay. Yeah. Oh, I'm beat. Yeah. Oh. Like, it's like that. Mm -hmm. It's just a way of verbalizing your tiredness. As far as I'm aware, Evelyn could say, like, no, it means I am so tired, I want to die. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
So tired I could eat a horse. Uh, Where does that come from? I don't know, but I found out recently. We'll come back to that. Uh, Oh, we should do an episode about those because I, I, we could do it now. There's a whole, (laughs) there's a whole thing about um, like long time no see and things like that are all Uh from uh, Chinese merchants talking to Americans, but it's like broken English, so you say it that way. But there was a whole thing, oh. there's a whole thing, like, there's, like, dozens of those phrases. Like, I've never thought about that. Apparently, run amok is one as well. And really? I, it's like, it, things like that, and I'm like, I didn't understand that. The other one that I was thinking of was waiting for the other shoe to drop. It's like, you hear that, and you're like, I know what that means, but what does that mean? And then, yeah, apparently, are you th- th- throwing your shoes? Yeah, what do you think it means? I would think that it would mean that you're taking your shoes off there in your hand and you're and you're dropping the shoes. And so yeah. you, like that's where it it comes from, I guess. You're pretty close. Like I know I know what the phrase is, you know. Yeah, like you're waiting for something but, to happen. Yeah. But apparently it was like was it New York? I don't know. <clears throat> but it was like people in apartments would hear their neighbor upstairs come home. And they would take off one shoe, and then they were waiting for the other shoe to drop. So it's like, oh, oh the other person's home. Like, work is done, kind of thing. Like, time to sleep. And that's so mm. weird. I, so many phrases like that where I'm like, I, why? I've never thought of that. Because I wanted to get a tattoo. I watched The Bear one time. And I, uh-huh. liked, I liked the phrase, there is no other shoe. Because it's like, I feel like that's kind of anxiety. It's like waiting for uh-huh. something bad to happen. And then there yeah. is no other shoe is like, you're waiting for something that's not going to happen. Yeah. And I like that. And I was like, I wanted to get a tattoo saying that or like a tattoo of one shoe or something. I'm like, I don't know how to get that encapsulated where it's not cringe. Yeah. I like that. I like that saying. I'm looking at a list now of like famous phrases like turning a blind eye. Yeah. Often refers to a willful refusal to acknowledge a particular reality. It dates back to a legendary chapter in the career of British naval hero Horatio Nelson. Uh, Great name. Nelson's ships were pitted against a large Danish Norwegian fleet when his more conservative superior officer flagged him to withdraw. The one eyed Nelson supposedly brought his telescope to his bad eye and proclaimed, mm. I really don't see the signal. Hmm. Hmm. Crazy. Crazy crazy how these things happen. Crazy, crazy. I'm trying to find that thing. Oh, yeah. Here it is. Because I saw it on Reddit. It said, long time no see was one. No Mm -hmm. can do. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, that was the only two they listed. There was a whole bunch of them. It makes sense that 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 those would come from just like broken English and stuff. Yeah. Interesting how our lives go. Where all (laughs) these things come from. I want more. I want more. This doesn't explain. It's like a dime a dozen and it just says something common. I guess that explains it. It's explaining the meaning of the phrase though, but not the etymology of it. Like Ah. when people would say sleep tight, it was because Mm. of tightening your hay in your bed. You would have to tighten the string around the hay to make your bed firm. This one I've never really thought about and it makes so much sense, but hold a candle to. It comes from uh, like reveal something when well when people were uh, like reading stuff and they would hold a candle up to something so other people could see what they were doing or what mm. they were talking about. I guess you shouldn't hold a candle to that because it'll go up in flames. A bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. You've heard that before, right? Yeah. So it's like it's better to have two one of uh, something that you actually have than two of something that you might never have. I guess. Yeah. Uh, it comes from the sport of falconry, where the bird in the hand, the falcon, was more worth more than the two in the bush, which is the prey. Oh. So it's like the, the praying falcon is worth more than the two preys. Uh, beat around the bushes from medieval English hunting practices. Some men would whack bushes with sticks to scare birds out so that the others could hunt them. Beating the bush directly could be dangerous. These are, uh, these are so weird. I understand. Like, what does bite right. the bullet mean? Just, like, <laughs> kill yourself? <laughs> yeah, where do, where does that come from? Wait, hold on. So, 
biting the bullet is, is like like get it over with, right? Yeah. But what would that how would that originate? Is it going to be a thing that like they called like a dowel that you put in your mouth, like if you're getting your legs sawn off, you had to like bite down on that, like and they called that a bullet. Because bullet is a French word. Maybe. Let's find out. Wait, I have it. Biting a bullet is a oh. metaphor in which is used to describe a situation, often a debate, where one accepts an inevitable impending hardship or hard to refute point. It is derived historically from the practice of having a patient clench a bullet in their teeth as a way to cope with the pain of a surgical procedure without anesthetic. You were right. Yeah, but that said that it was an actual bullet that they had to clench between their teeth. Yeah, well, I mean, that was probably... Long time ago. It was probably during war. <laughs> it's like, what do we have to bite down on? I There's guess... There's no wood! Bite bullets! <laughs> bullets. God. It makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. I like what this. are your favorite phrases out there, audience? Give uh, us your favorite phrases. Yeah, and the reason, and the, like, the thing behind them. Because there's a mm -hmm. bunch... And now I'm looking these all up. I want to know more about them. Another one that I remember seeing was you have your work cut out for you. And then I was always like, yeah, Irish people said that all the time. Like something is hard to do or like you have mm -hmm. a, a lot of stuff ahead of you. It's like, damn, you have your work cut out for you. And apparently that means that tailors would like cut out bits of fabric or something, or maybe it's shoe. What's the sh people who make shoes called? Um, huh. Shoemakers, they would like cut cobblers, cobbler. I think it's um, tailors would like cut pieces of fabric out so that when they got to the next day, they would have their work ready and cut out for them, ready to go. Oh. Stuff like that is so cool. The language, man. It's crazy. The language is crazy. Also thinking about um, thinking about the way that people speak and how accents have evolved and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like there, <laughs> I was going down this random rabbit hole the other day of uh, time travel stuff, mm. and it was like a supposed interview with a time traveler, <laughs> time traveler who's here from like a thousand years in the in the future, and everyone in the comments is like, "Oh, this guy's from a thousand years from now, but he still speaks like a normal American person today." Uh -huh. Like, yeah, I'm pretty sure that that's. I mean, the video is obviously fake, but yeah. Um, it's like it's so you couldn't have gone a little further to sell the illusion. Mm -hmm. But it, it's it's really cool. I watched this guy that was speaking, technically speaking English, but like through the years and whatever, and just the way that accents developed and stuff. Yeah, and, I've seen a guy do that with like English accents, mm -hmm. like from England. Yeah. And it's really weird how um, like a long time ago it was like, that's English? You guys aren't, it sounds so broken and weird. Yeah. I mean, we have so many words now that are all French or German words that we're just speaking day to day. And it this was all was. invented by the Queen. Who knew that? Who knew? Lizzie herself the did queen, all of it. The Queen's English. That is what yeah. the King in Korea did. They were yeah. they would speak like old Chinese or have Chinese characters. And then he was like, mm -hmm. nah, nah, nah. Way too complicated. Too many letters. We're going phonetic with it. We're making it in stacks. Mm -hmm. We're making it easy. And all the letters are going to look like your mouth and the shape that it makes when you say them. Even though I don't know. It makes sense. Like sometimes I say the letter and I'm like, I guess kind of, but. That's kind of what happened in Spain. Because if you go to Spain, everyone's speaking Spanish, obviously. Uh, but everyone speaks with a lisp. Mm. And it's because, uh, I don't know what king it was, but the king had a lisp. Yeah. So everyone was like, oh, we need to start speaking like the king. And so that's why if you go to Spain, people from yeah, Spain. Yeah, like the south like, have the lisp or the north have the lisp and the others don't. And it's like a point mm -hmm. of differentiation between them to be like, oh, you're from the south and you speak with the lisp. Huh? Language is crazy. You can all be speaking the same language, but there's all these different dialects and stuff and accents. It's so cool. Yeah, so and we all cool. just learn it as a baby. You're sitting around mm -hmm. and your parents are talking and you're like, what the fuck? And you're just like, a little fucking sponge okay, soaking I, it up. It's like, I think I get it. And then somehow you just start speaking and you understand language. That's fucking uh -huh. weird. It's wild. Babies have way it's... more power than we give them credit for. What if you put a baby in front of like nuclear launch codes or like mm -hmm. the Enigma machine and the baby's like, eventually I'll figure it out. <laughs> 
I'm a yeah. baby. I can do anything. I'm very malleable right now. I mean, experiments, I'm sure, have been done. That's true. Un- unfortunately. Unfortunately. Yeah. Like, there was... During war I, times, there's always experiments done. Like, people try to do telekinesis and shit. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, what happens to a person if you're just in complete solitude for your entire life? Like, what... You just rely on instinct for everything? You probably just like, end up you... like a Reddit mod or something. Yeah, probably. <laughs> probably. It's no, Some it's not that brain different. leak listener or something. <laughs> something crazy like that. Hell like... yeah. Yeah. Oh, we should we should take a dive down crazy experiments that have happened someday. Ooh, Ooh. that's a good one. Instead of the conspiracy theories, we should look yeah. well, we should do that as well, but look at awful experiments through history. That yeah. tried to. I remember when I was a kid, I tried to do telekinesis, and I was so convinced I was going to be the one to crack it. It wasn't. <laughs> I like, tried to do tele- telekinesis, and I was so good at it. <laughs> I thought I was going to be. I was like, no, other people don't get it. They haven't like watched as many like cartoons and movies and stuff as mm-hmm. I have. Like, I'm playing enough games. Like, I get it. Like, I'm in tune with my brain. And I was sitting there for like an hour one night trying to move a pencil. And I was like, yeah. okay, sheer force doesn't work. And I was like, okay, really clear your mind and like meditate. And I was so convinced I was going to get that pencil to move. I and was I- so close. I swear. <laughs> so I close thought I saw it move once, but it turns out I just popped a blood vessel in my head from squeezing too hard. Mm-hmm. <sighs> oh, I, I really, I really think I can do it. I still think you were right there. I'm the one that can crack it. My brain is so unique. That's why I'm depressed. It's because all of the telekinesis is pushing the happy out. Mm-hmm. And yeah. it's, it's replacing it with depression. And if I figure out telekinesis, then it'll all slide into place. Have you, ever, mm-hmm. have you ever had that thing where it's like, you get like aches and pains or you get headaches or something, you're like, or you're sad all the time and then you're like, man, I must be like deficient in this like one vitamin or something. And mm-hmm. if I just get that one thing, it'll fix my whole life. It's like, it'll I'm on a new fine. inhaler. All my headaches are going to go away after this. <laughs> yep. And sometimes they do. True. I mean, the placebo effect is very real. Yeah. <laughs> you convince yourself that something is making you feel better. Sometimes you will just kind of make yourself feel better. <laughs> well, I, I went to just... the doctor for blood tests and they were like, yeah, your vitamin D is low because I'm a gamer mm-hmm. in England. Um, and I was like, ooh, if I start taking vitamin D, everything's going to slot into place. It yeah. Didn't. It didn't. I started taking vitamin D. I think I feel a little better, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I have no idea. My vitamin D levels are for sure higher, but does that mean <laughs> that I feel better? I, yeah, I remember I we were I doing know. that, and Evelyn used to take a multivitamin every day. And she was like, mm-hmm. you can't hurt. And then she went to the yeah. doctor, and she was like low on certain things. And she was like, what the fuck is the point? <laughs> yeah, what am I doing? What's it's all bullshit. On? I don't know how my body works. Nobody knows. But telekinesis, knows. I'm going to do close. it. We're close. We're that close. We'll be the first telekinetic podcast. Ooh. We don't even have to post anymore. We just go, we send out the podcast uh-huh. vibe uh-huh. to everybody. Uh-huh. The brain is just, you know, a natural RSS feed. I love that. Flawless. I want Flawless. my brain to be broadcast to the world. I want you all mm. to feel my suffering. <laughs> God, oh. I always wonder man. about that. Like if somebody was in my body for a day and I was in theirs, like you got all of your like thoughts and your patterns and your aches and pains and your fluids and everything. And would somebody mm. come into my body and be like, this is how you live? <laughs> you feel like this <laughs> all the time? Ugh. Or if they, I go into somebody else's body and I'm like, oh, you have it way worse than I do, but you're fine? What's, What's going, going on, on with why, that? Why are you fine? Yeah. You're chill with this? You have this pain in your fucking rib all the time and you're just happy? I had an upset belly earlier and it fucked me up for a week. Yeah. And it's probably because I sat down and played video games and ate McDonald's all day. There's another phrase, you know, try to walk a mile in my shoes. Yeah, I wonder what that one means. You know, can't walk a mile, you can't, wa- you can't walk a mile in my shoes because we're different shoe sizes. Walk, walk a mile in my shoe, shame on you. Walk a mile in your mm-hmm. shoes. You can't be fooled again. You can't walk a mile in my shoes because we use different um, units of measurement. If we have you don't different, do use miles. Different orthotics mm-hmm. in our yeah. shoes as well, so it might hurt your feet. Yeah, it'll hurt your back and stuff, and your posture will be all fucked up. You might get blisters. Yeah. Well, anyway, 
<laughs> I have no idea what this episode was. <laughs> we were on topic for a little bit. We talked about the movies. We talked about language. And what is language if not just movies? If not just sounds that we made up. Mm. Anyway, like next week we should have Matt Pat on the pod. <gasps> oh, baby, I forgot about that. We're filming with him soon. So yep. mm-hmm. he should be next week. It'll if he's very... not, then... Oops. It'll be a very exciting episode. I'm very excited to talk to that boy. Yeah, we need to try um, and talk to him about stuff that's not just all about retiring. Because I feel like he's probably oh, talked yeah. to death about that. So we'll ask him when he shit his pants. Yeah. Can oh, I yeah. ask, can I ask so, him that? Yeah, you can ask him that. Yeah. You can call dibs. You can call dibs on that You one. can ask him something from your brain. Okay, I will. I'll cool. ask him about his retirement. You ask him about shitting his pants. Okay. Right as the Perfect. world should so, be. So, <laughs> everyone, uh, mark on your calendars. It should already be marked on your calendars for every week. Yeah, and subscribe, you know? or bad yeah. things will happen to you. Also, let us know. I was thinking about this the other day, about, uh, and I don't know if this is a, even a thing that we can change, but as far as YouTube goes, because we do kind of upload the podcast at, in the middle of the night. Yeah. Uh, should we so change it? I, should we should we change it? Is it fine uploading in the middle of the night? Because I feel like whenever you we upload for audio, it's whatever. Um, but maybe we change the video to uh, a time in the in the day. Uh, yeah. Let us know. At least for most of the world. <laughs> yeah. When we upload now, it's most people who go to bed or waking up and no one knows. Yeah. So maybe we'll change it. Let us know. Anyway, have a leaky, leaky day. Bye-bye. See you next time. Bye. Brain leak.